Hey everybody, Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com. That's me. In this video, what I want to talk about is this recent Facebook purchase of Instagram. And there's a few issues about this that um, make it a curious buy as far as I'm concerned. First of all, Instagram is just a photo sharing and tagging application. It's been around since 2010, so it's just a couple years old. It's got like 10 employees. It makes no money. There's no defined business model as of yet, as far as I understand. And it was started by a couple of 20 year olds. It's interesting to me what makes me think that this is an unusual uh, purchase is I wonder why Facebook would pay a billion dollars for a company that's just a couple years old. Uh, the, uh, the technology that they developed is not proprietary. It's not, well, it's proprietary, but it's easily reproduced. A photo sharing app for Android and iPhone, it, it is not that difficult to make. Um, they have 30 million users, which is a lot, but um, compared to Facebook, it's it's nothing. So I, first question I ask myself is why would Facebook pay such a huge amount of money for something that they could probably pop out themselves within a few months, if that long? You know, they've been around for two years, but much of that two years has been on things that, uh, you know, really not related to uh, app development. So you figure, you know, Two years, so you figure the first you can knock off six months of, of that two years on uh, sushi parties and, and sushi and sake parties. You take another six months off the company's time in uh, securing financing and so on, all the business end of things. So you, you you eliminate a year, so you got a year left. So in that year, you know you're looking at let's say maybe. You can eight months of development, uh, software development, and that's being generous because a lot of that time would be sort of trying to figure out the UI and the specifics about how the application will operate and so on. If you're coming at it having already seen it, uh, you know, it functioning, so Facebook was looking at Instagram and going, okay, what are they doing here? Okay, it seems to work. To copy it, its functionality, and to integrate it into Facebook wouldn't be such a big deal. So they're, I guess they're buying a community, but they're buying, you know, relative to Facebook, a relatively small community. So they're going to spend a billion dollars on that. So it's not because the, you know, again, let me, let me just recap this. It's not that the technology is special. It's not that it's very hard to reproduce. It's not. Um, and I'm a software developer, I can tell you that. It's not that, uh, you know, they have a, a solid business model. It doesn't, you know, they're not making any money. It's, you know, um, so you got to wonder. It's not because they have a huge user base that uh, Facebook uh, is worried about. Uh, you know, 30 million is a lot, but compared to Facebook, you know, hundreds of millions, what's the deal? So you have to ask yourself, what what's the real reason? Why are they buying this thing for so much money? And maybe I'm a conspiracy theorist or something, but I have to tell you, you know, something smells here. And what's inter interesting about this is that you, you see many of the same venture capital guys, the VC guys, as I say, uh, are involved with uh, who are involved with in Instagram they're the same a lot of the same people involved with Facebook so what I'm thinking I think there's a bit of an insider uh, back scratching going on here a little bit of uh, you know Facebook is going public soon they're gonna uh, fleece the public I mean they're gonna offer their stock to the public and then uh, so you got these guys uh, with the Instagram guy, it's only been around a couple of years. They're growing quick in terms of user base. You know, again, this whole thing about evaluating companies based on how many users they have, it's very reminiscent of during uh, the 1990s, during the dot-com bubble days, where businesses were evaluated based on how many visits they had to their sites. 
So instead of visits, we have now users. And I guess you can argue, and this is, in my opinion, really stretching it, I guess you can argue that users are a bit more valuable uh, than visitors, I suppose. You know, it takes, takes you know, two seconds, I suppose, more to enter your email address and your name and there, you're a user now. Um, but, you know, after the dot-com bubble crash and everybody realized it was just a giant scam, uh, you know, all these companies that were value you know, had tremendous values based on nothing except they have a lot of users. And I, I think we're seeing the same thing with this whole social networking fad. I think, and this is just speculation on my part, I think the VC guys, the, mon the money guys who are in a, at the bottom of Facebook and Instagram, I think they're, they're, they're worried that the end may be near with the scam. I think people are starting to realize slowly, eh, maybe slowly, slowly but surely, that this is just pretty much like the dot-com bubble days. Starting to see more and more articles out there. People starting to recognize this whole idea of evaluating companies based on their user base rather based on actual revenues is uh, f stupid. Like, you know, Facebook itself, its evaluation is, is astronomically high. I think it's a total rip. Uh, I think the VC guys, the original funders, are looking to get out and cash out. Anybody who buys a Facebook IPO is taking a massive risk. It's priced to perfection. You know, they're pricing it at basically 100 times earnings, 100 years of earnings. It's absolutely astoundingly ridiculous. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, how how much of a premium they're giving this company. It's crazy because as we've seen with previous social networks like Friendster and MySpace, these things can fall out of, out of favor in a moment's notice. And so I think with the Instagram, my guess, and it's just my guess, is that you got the same VC guys, the same money guys who are in on Facebook saying, listen, let's roll the Instagram into Facebook because I don't think we're going to be able to develop this thing quick enough uh, to IPO it. And that's what is just a quick cash out. Look at Groupon. Groupon, I warned against that. And it, look at it, all this, all this dirt is starting to come out as far as I understand where there's uh, inconsistencies, uh, shall we say, with their accounting. Look at Groupon. You got to really look at these technologies. There's not much to it. To build a social networking site is very trivial. Uh, there are, there are, there are uh, software packages out there that it will give you all the capabilities or a lot of the capabilities of Facebook for 200 bucks. And you just install it and away you go. Yes, Facebook's value is in its brand, its name, and so on. But again, what MySpace has taught us and Friendster has taught us, these two very large and dominant social networks in their day, that this, uh, this can fade very quickly, very quickly. There's nothing on Facebook that's so special that's going to keep people there. And it, it doesn't take much, and these things are, are, are garbage. Back in the 1990s, Yahoo bought something called GeoCities. And GeoCities was kind of, a, a, you know, it's just a basic, you know, build your website uh, type of uh, a web uh, place. It was pre-Facebook type of thing. There was no social networking. But anyway, the point is, it was a free service. They had a ton of users. And Yahoo bought it for a billion bucks. And they eventually shut it down because it was just a bunch of junk. You know, it's easy to get a lot of users when you give something away. Um, and this whole business model uh, that we see now, where it's about pump up a company, get a bunch of users, then try and gin up the, 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 the sales of ads. You know, everybody's selling ads. Like, you know, it would be cool if somebody actually sold something, some product instead of just ads. And, uh, something tangible, something real, you know. But anyway, that's, I'll stop with my rant. So yeah, again, I look at this Facebook, Instagram deal for a billion. I see these, uh, this little cabal of uh, venture capital guys 
uh, funding these businesses and selling these businesses back and forth to other businesses that they're all have uh, their hands in, and then they're putting it out as quickly as as they can, uh, uh, putting it out on the market on you know so that Wall Street can get in on the gig, so that they can sell shares and cash out themselves. That's my interpretation. I, this is this is all. Uh, it really puts a bad you know, a bad face on technology, if you ask me. I think this whole uh, this whole social networking bubble is going to fall apart at some point. I'm not sure when. I don't like it. It reminds me of the the Wall Street housing hustle. Remember, remember that houses can never go down in value. Remember that houses are a great investment. Remember that. Remember that whole thing. And then we find out it was a giant Wall Street scam where they were pumping up valuations and they were getting people into the market to push out valuations. Meanwhile, they were skimming, making their money on the uh, transactions, making their money on the fake evaluations. And then the whole thing crashed. And then they, they handed the bill over to uh, John Q. Public to uh, bail them out and then they continue to make their bonuses. This is not too far off from that as far as I'm concerned this whole thing I um, anyway that's just me I'm a renter here my apologies again I would be very wary about getting involved in any Facebook IPO they are priced to perfection in that uh, paying a hundred years worth of projected earnings for a company and this is rough numbers is absolutely crazy considering a historical averages uh, people pay no more than 10 years worth of revenues for any asset, whether it be uh, a company or a house or anything. So whenever you see this kind of crazy stuff happen, you just got to step aside and uh, let the madness uh, ensue without your money going down this pit. So um, there you go. That's my rant. Sorry about it. Uh, it just gets on my nerves, these type of things.